Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome online for this new webinar. My name is Benjamin Debusser, and I'm the head of events program for JEC. Thanks for joining us today. Today's webinar is about smart automation, Internet of Things, and hydrogen. The webinar is presented with Persico Group. And I'm pleased to welcome online Claudia Persico, VP and Director of Rotom Holding at Persico for a few words of introduction. Claudia, thanks for being with us today. It's a real pleasure. Welcome online. Thank you, everybody, and uh, good afternoon. So uh, I guess uh, everybody knows Persico is a family company. So uh, I'm in charge of rotational uh, division, business unit. And I'm very pleased uh, to have a chance to have a webinar today to talk about automation, IoT, and uh, hydrogen. So now, uh, Luca will uh, continue the uh, conversation. Thank you very much, Claudia. Uh, as mentioned, you will now discover the latest Rotomolding news during a multi-voice presentation addressing the current topical issues such as automation, digitization, and renewable energy. Thanks to its peculiarities and key factors, the compact Rotomolding Cell Smart by Persico Group is the perfect solution for your green and sustainable products. Smart technology offers an efficient use of energy and materials, which is crucial no nowadays, but it also guarantees high production rates, savings on product costs, and rapid return on investment. The webinar today will be divided uh, into three parts, and we will welcome six speakers. The first part will be about rotomolding automation and will be presented by Luca Carrara, the technical office manager smart at Persico Group, together with Alberto Vimercati, the global account manager robotics at AVB Robotics and Motion Division. The second part of the presentation will be about service and Internet of Things and will be jointly presented by Walter Sirki, the Group Service Director at Persico Group, together with Camilo Gelfi, the CEO of Forley Factory in Italy. And the last part of the presentation is about hydrogen and will be presented by Siegfried Eckert, the Managing Director at ECS GmbH, together with Matteo Cortesi, the Sales Manager Rotom Holding at Persico Group. We will dedicate the last part uh, of this webinar to Q&A with the audience. Uh, and so I ask the audience to ask your question in the question tab that you can find at the bottom right of your screen, just on the left of the chat tab. So please ask any question you have as it comes to your mind, and we'll do our best to answer your question during the Q&A part. As usual, I recommend to be connected through cable wire rather than Wi-Fi if you want to maximize the experience of this webinar. And in any case, the webinar is being recorded, so you will be able to view the entire program later on gccomposites.tv and you will receive also a link to download the presentation. So let's now discover how SMART represents a new era in rotational molding. I'm gonna start uh, with a brief introduction of Persico. So as mentioned by Claudia, Persico he has been a family company since 1976. And the company today counts uh, 850 employees all over the world. With its uh, headquarters uh, and main production facilities in Italy, Persico has key production and sales unit in the US, Mexico, Germany, and China uh, to serve its customer worldwide. And in uh, May, Persico has uh, strengthened its presence in the US through the acquisition of Precision Mold Services, a company specialized in producing, repairing, and modifying rotational and vacuum form molds. 
So for the first part about processional molding, again, I'm pleased to welcome on stage Luca Carrara at Persico and Alberto Vimercati at AVB. Luca, the stage is now yours. You're on mute, uh, Luca. Hello, Benjamin. Thank Hello, everybody. Um, at first, uh, we want you to show you how Persico works normally together with with our clients we assist our clients from the very first step of the project to the after sale support and then we can say we are proud of our r d facility and department which works in development of new solution to meet and anticipate also any market request over the last few years we focus our efforts on the developing of the automatic solution for uh, for auto molding in order to reduce manpower and uh, optimize the machine efficiency and output. Today, we want to show you one of the latest production cell that we have delivered. The cell is dedicated to the production of uh, plastic pallet. This is not a simple plastic hollow part. It has a couple of features that makes it unique. The first one is the presence of uh, five composite reinforcing bars inside the plastic and they need to be placed in precise position of the cavity before starting the cycle. The second uh, specific feature of this product is the fact that the part is completely filled with polyethylene foam to improve the strength of the part itself and also to keep the composite bars in position. To achieve this result also the heating of the mold required a particular design. Thank you, Luca. Uh, before watching the video, can you please uh, describe a little bit the process? Um, yes, um, as we can see in the in the video, um, the the line uh, we have uh, we have manufactured is um, composed of uh, four different smart machines, two on the left side and two on the right side. One robot in the middle with the seven axes to allow the movement along the cell, one waiting station for both the outer skin of the pallet and the core, and one station for the preparation and the parts unloading. The four machine, as you can see, work simultaneously. The system software supervises and synchronizes the activity of the machine and, and the robot. Each machine is equipped with four cavities stacked on each other. The cycle starts with the loading of the bars. The robot automatically takes the tool from the service station with the bars already loaded. It moves in the front of the machine and goes inside the cavity to load the bars in precise position. At this point, the mold can be closed thanks to electrical actuators. And the machine rotates in the position required for the powder loading. Okay, you see the mold is closing. In the meantime, the skin powder is weighted and loaded in 12 different toppers mounted on a single frame that will be handled by the robot. The robot will take this tool. It will move above the machine where the bars are already loaded and fill the powder in the cavities thanks to 12 fill ports that can be opened and closed automatically. Okay, this is the, the movement of the robot to go to load the powder. When the loading is completed, the robot will bring back the hoppers to their parking spot and the thermal cycle and rotation of the machine can start. When the, when the specified mold temperature is reached, the rotation will stop and the fill port will be open again towards the loading of the second shot, the core. So the robot takes the tool with the 12 hoppers of the core and moves again to the same machine with the open fill ports to load the core. Once the loading is completed, the fill ports will close and the second stage of the cooking can start. Okay, this is the, the loading of the second shot that happens in a precise moment of the cycle. The second, the second phase of the cooking is critical, as we said, because the foaming process should start from the side opposite to the fill port 
and continue towards them. So in this way, the air can flow outside the, of the cavity and will not be trapped inside the, inside the plastic part. This particular heating sequence can be achieved thanks to the proper management of the mold heating zones of the smart technology. When the, the foaming process is completed, the cooling fans of the machine are turned on and the mold can be, can be cooled down. And again, when, when the molding temperature is reached, the molds are opened and the robot can go inside the cavities again to do two different operations. The first one is to load the bars for the next cycle in the lower cavity. And the second one is to demold the parts. You can see in this part of the video that the mold is opening. After that, the robot will go inside with its tool. We'll leave the bar in the lower part of the molds as it's doing right now. And after that, the parts will be, the parts that were seen on the upper parts uh, will be demolded and uh, goes on this tray. The parts will then be moved to the unloading station. And uh, as you have seen, uh, the, the cycle require multiple intervention of the robot for each, uh, for each machine. Thus the synchronization is critical and at the same time, the process control is the key to successfully mold such a complex part. Thanks for your attention. I'll give the stage to Alberto Vimercati. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Luca. Hello, everyone. And uh, okay, I just start my presentation giving some few words about uh, ABB Robotics and how we have been involved in this process. Uh, in general, as a robot manufacturer, we are um, an active part of the last industrial revolution, which involves uh, a lot of improvement in technological uh, production process. Our robots and uh, function package and software also are uh, the core of uh, innovative systems used in the most of the industry segments. And uh, our organization has um, a global footprint. Uh, in order to stay close to, to the customer, to their needs, and support them in application and also in after sales, and also to assure reliability of uh, the product uh, worldwide uh, and uh, in each process uh, required. Here are just a few numbers about our company worldwide. Uh, and uh, as you can see, we have much more than 500,000 robots installed uh, all over the world. To be close to our customer, we develop uh, a special program uh, that we call Value Provider that uh, involves uh, many companies and uh, they are a part of a uh, part of a special program and Persico is uh, one of that, has been assigned as a value provider for a long time and uh, we have a very strong collaboration that has uh, the target uh, to build uh, a strong relationship uh, and to manage and drive values uh, to do the end customers. As you can see, an example of collaboration is uh, this uh, simulation that has been done with a very powerful software, the most powerful in robotics, which is called Robo Studio, is an ABD product uh, that help us in uh, developing together with uh, Persico uh, the real cell simulation, seeing um, all, not only and helping in, uh, in the project phases, but also the possibility to program in the robot offline and, and to create a, a digital twin uh, and manage then uh, the installation. Alberto, yeah, I, I have a quick question, but I see that you you have yeah. maybe a slide for that. Can you present other robot applications in, in rotor molding process? Uh, yes, for sure. We have seen uh, that uh, for, uh, robots can be um, a strong part of the automation in the, in the process by loading and loading materials or maybe placing inserts uh, uh, and uh, loading uh, also parts. But uh, I can imagine that in the post-processing, uh, working on the surface uh, we can do today 
many applications like uh, sending, for example, or collaborative sending, which is one of the new frontier of this application, or three million dr or drilling on this plastic part, or maybe laser, laser or water jet cutting or mechanical cutting or dispensing gluing. In case the parts needs to be painted, we can make also flaming, painting or decorating using uh, spraying and different uh, tools. We can also use uh, robots to make inspection, dimensional inspection, quality control for the surface measurements. And for sure, we can also make packaging and palletizing of uh, the parts. So there is a wide range of application after this process that can be applied. So I finish my presentation and give the floor to the next speaker. To you, Thank ben. you. Thank okay. you very much, uh, Alberto and uh, Luca, for this uh, first part on the on rotational molding, which I'm sure helped the audience to to understand a bit more the, the rotor molding uh, process. Uh, again, if you have any question uh, during uh, this presentation, please don't hesitate to post your uh, question in the question tab uh, at the bottom right of your screen. Um, let's now move to the second part uh, of the webinar uh, dedicated to service and Internet of Things. And I'm pleased to welcome uh, for this part, uh, I'm pleased to welcome online uh, Walter Sirki, the Group Service Director at Persico, who will uh, jointly present with uh, Camillo Gelfi, uh, the CEO of Forley Factory. Uh, Walter, the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, good. Good afternoon or good evening or good morning. It depends where you are. Uh, my name is Walter Sirki and I'm in charge of the Aftersales Technical Services for Persico Group. Today, I want to share with you the six pillars on which our uh, Aftersales services are based. So let's explore together these six pillars. The first one is real-time remote support. Uh, we understand that time is really critical every time an issue may arise during production. Therefore, we have a team of well-trained expert service engineers uh, that can connect by remote to the machines and quick fixing issues or provide guidelines and instructions to the plant operators on how to fix any kind of issues. Now let's move on, on the second pillar that is about the uh, continuous training modules. These kind of trainings are designed to keep up to date the plant uh, operators or process engineers in the plant for sharing best practices. We can tailor made these trainings for assuring to use at the best the machine. The third pillar is performance optimization checks and audit. We can schedule regular uh, inspections of the machines because we believe that being proactive is better than being reactive. And with these regular performance checks and audit, uh, we want to optimize your system efficiency by identifying in advance any potential issue before this could impact your operations. Now let's talk about the fourth pillars that is consultation services. This, what I mean with this, uh, during the entire uh, life cycle of the machine, we can provide technical uh, support for design and identify any kind of upgrade uh, refurbishing modification of the machine to prolong its technical life. The, oh, Oops. I'm not switching. Okay, well, yeah. uh, the fifth pillar is about the preventive uh, tailor made uh, maintenance uh, plan. We can design together with the customer on a specific needs or spe specific utilization of the machine uh, preventive maintenance plan. 
uh, in a way that can keep the equipment at peak of performance throughout the entire life cycle of the machine by itself. Uh, last but not least, of course, spare parts uh, availab availability. Our extensive inventory of spare parts, high quality spare parts, uh, readily available uh, can reduce, of course, the downtime and maintain uh, the best reliability of the equipment throughout the entire life cycle of the machine. Walter, uh, before moving forward, could you explain to the audience why uh, potential customers uh, should choose uh, this solution at Persico? Oh, well, uh, thank you for your question, because this helped me to introduce my last message for today, uh, because uh, we are more than just a product. Uh, we are a dedicated partner committed to support our customer throughout the entire life cycle of our machine uh, in a way uh, that we can tailor our services to meet uh, any specific needs and contribute to maintain seamless operations of our industrial automation systems. So, uh, this is all from my end. Thank you for your attention. Uh, time has flown by, and now it's time for me to hand over the stage to Camillo for the second part of this uh, webinar chapter. Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you. My name is Camillo Gelfi, and I'm the CEO of 40 Factory. Zero Factory is an European scale-up high tech company involved in the development of uh, industrial IoT solutions, especially for machine manufacturers such as Persico. And of course, uh, we uh, support uh, our customer in the journey of uh, digitalization and uh, servitization. And in particular, with Persico, we have developed uh, the industrial IoT platform for smart machine, for smart technology. And so uh, now uh, let's talk about uh, IoT. Uh, uh, IoT, of course, stayed for Internet of Things. And this technology uh, enabled the transformation of data generated by smart connected machines into value for end user, as well as enabling exciting new after sales services. And with a connected smart machine, you can, of course, uh, increase production efficiency by immediately uh, identifying major bottlenecks and uh, getting important feedback for, uh, for example, process optimization in order to increase production quality and uh, uh, also, of course, production speed. And uh, um, sustainability is increasingly uh, as an important issue facing our companies. And thanks to smart IoT, you can monitor uh, energy and utilities consumption and also raw material consumption. And most important, you can correlate them to the uh, production context. Uh, for example, with uh, uh, raw material supplier or, for example, with machine recipe or production shift and so on. And this is uh, very important because uh, this allows you to take cost-saving actions and certify the impact of your production. And this will be very important in the near future to obtain the so-called digital product passport that is proposed by European Commission. And uh, uh, talking about maintenance, uh, thanks to the smart IoT, you will be able to know in advance the remaining useful life uh, of critical machine components and uh, send a request directly to uh, Persico customer service in order to, uh, to buy a new spare part. Um, and uh, we provide also an innovative anomaly detection algorithm uh, that uh, is, uh, is based on artificial intelligence. Uh, and the application will notify you when the behavior of, or of a specific machine component uh, deviates from the learned normality by the algorithm. 
um, so a smart IoT platform has a simple and intuitive user interface, which allow even non-expert operator to easily get all the answer uh, related to machine and to the process. And the smart IoT uh, is a powerful digital application that transform the data of connected machines into value. And this is true uh, thanks to the PERSIC knowledge that is directly embedded within the tool. And therefore, Smart IoT represents the virtual bridge between your production process and the PERSIC technical expert. Uh, yeah. who, thanks to this tool, uh, are able to offer you advanced up at the sales services and support you uh, in improving your operational efficiency. And Camilio, can you explain uh, how um, our cyber security and, and data protection aspect managed uh, in this, uh, yeah, in this platform? Of course. Uh, from a technical point of view, uh, the system features an hybrid architecture uh, suited for data protection. And the information is stored in a dedicated uh, cloud tenant, which the data segregation for each end customer of Persico and also for each machine of Persico. And a cybersecurity assessment is repeated every six months on the entire architecture to ensure compliance with the most stringent standard in the uh, cybersecurity, uh, of course, in the industry sector. And finally, if you want, it's possible to choose a full edge mode in which the entire application and all the data reside within the perimeter of the end customer network. Thank you. And uh, I give the stage to, to the next speaker. Thank you very much, um, um, Camilio and Walter, for uh, this uh, second part about service and uh, Internet of Things. I remind the audience that if you have any question, you can pop them in the question tab. And I see that um, uh, some question has been asked and um, um, Luca, for example, can also answer some of them uh, uh, by writing. So again, please don't hesitate to to ask any question you, you would have. Um, let's now move to the last part of the presentation, uh, which is about hydrogen. And for this part, I'm pleased to welcome uh, Siegfried Eckert, the Managing Director at ECS, uh, together with Matteo Cortesi, the Sales Manager, Roto Molding at Persico. Yes, uh, thanks, Benjamin. Uh, first, I'd like to give you a short, brief introduction about ECS. We are a German engineering company who support customers in the field of engineering and consultancy development of composite pressure vessels. We have started 2017, and at this time, 80% of our business was in a low pressure cylinder projects. But the market has changed, and in the last years, Nowadays, more, most of our projects and inquiries are in high pressure application like hydrogen. We providing as ECS our customer service from preliminary feasibility studies until the certification support for their products. We are located in Germany, Germany near Frankfurt. Uh, this page gives you a small overview about the different composite pressure vessel applications from our customer. Starting uh, from the low pressure filter housing with a design burst pressure of 40 bar up to high pressure application like hydrogen storage systems with 2100 bar design burst pressure. For all these projects, we have to follow the standards. <coughs> But why hydrogen gets more and more attention? We all experience the weather catastrophe caused by climate change. Scientists worldwide agree that CO2 emissions are cause of this and must be cured. Therefore, 196 parties at the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Paris agreed on 12 December 2015 the goal to hold the increase of the global average temperature to well below two degrees above pre-industrial levels and pursues efforts to limit the temperature increase to 1.5 degrees 
above, uh, above three uh, pre-industrial levels. The climate global warming to 1.5 degrees greenhouse gas emission must peak before 2025 at the latest and decline 43 percent by 2030. To keep this goal, alternatives and renewable energy solutions uh, has to be provided. From today, the United Nations Climate Change Conference, maybe you have heard, hold, hold again a meeting in Dubai to see what is the level after eight years discussion and working uh, on this. One of the solution to bring it down is hydrogen. Hydrogen will be used to replace oil-based gas, uh, gases and fuels. <clears throat> Operating at scale, clean hydrogen and hydrogen-based fuels could play a central role in effort to decarbonize the global energy system alongside technologies like renewable and carbon captured utilization and storage solutions. The diagram shows the worldwide hydrogen demand in the last years and the forecast for 2030. The figures are in meter, a million metric tons. But please be aware that all these figures give an estimation and depend on which website you are searching, which report you read, you will find different figures. <clears throat> but we can say today that China, India, Japan, South Korea, Europe and North America will account for 75% of the global hydrogen demand and already today China is the largest consumer of hydrogen. China's forecast for clean hydrogen by 2050 is the demand which we have worldwide for uh, 2030, which is around 200 million uh, tons. <clears throat> and Siegfried, a quick yes. question. How is hydrogen transported to the right place then? Okay. Um, uh, hydrogen, let me maybe first explain where the hydrogen will be produced. Um, hydrogen can be produced from diverse domestic resources, including f uh, fossil fuels, biomass and water electrolyze with electricity. The environmental impact and energy efficiency of hydrogen depend on how it is produced. Several projects are underway to decrease cost and cost associated with hydrogen production. Uh, but everyone is looking for green hydrogen. Therefore, mostly green, hydrogen, uh, green electricity from sun and wind sources is used. Besides, the hydrogen production electricity is necessary to charge the electrical, electric vehicles in Europe. Therefore, the major markets to produce hydrogen will come from countries in Middle East and Africa. And this slide shows the way of the hydrogen. And now I will come to your uh, question, Benjamin, um, how to produce hydrogen. There are different solutions available to transport and to storage the hydrogen. This slide here shows only three major ways there are more available. Each solution has their advantages and disadvantages. In combination with nitrogen, we can transport it, the, the, the hydrogen gas as ammonia. Ammonia is a carbon neutral, neutral hydrogen compound and has a high hydrogen storage capacity. It can be decomposed, releasing nitrogen and hydrogen gases. In other direction, ammonia can be easily liquefied, stored, transported, and, and converted into hydrogen if required. The second big solution we see in the market is liquefied by cooling the gas down. Hydrogen liqui liquefaction is an energy intensive process that requires the hydrogen to be cooled uh, up to minus 250 degrees. But this consume up to 35% of the energy in the stored hydrogen. Current methods use a multi-stage process of compression and expansion of the hydrogen gas until it is liquefied. Or the third solution is compressing the hydrogen gas. This is the solution where we are working on it. 
the gas will will compress into dividend pressure level depend on application. Maybe today the standard in the market is still 350 bar, but 700 bar getting more and more attractive. Based on the low density of the hydrogen, let me give, or give, let me give you an explanation. Um, a truck which will run 1,000 kilometer needs approximately 65 kilogram of hydrogen, which makes the tank's volume of 1,650 liter necessary. Um, to transport the high, uh, a higher amount of gas, there are containments available. This is a special design metal frame similar to a shipping container. In this container frame with, let me say, 20 or 40 feet, it is possible to transport in the 40 feet container 1,400 kilogram hydrogen compressed with 700 bar. If we consider that a container vessel can carry 3,000 of these containers, a lot of composite pressure vessels are required from the market. But um, not only as a mobile pipeline, the composite pressure vessel are used. Some other application shown on this slide. For mobility, it is used in cars like Hyundai Nexo or Toyota Mirai and others. Also for trucks and buses, it is very popular. For train of forklifts, forklifts as well. For the transport, maybe from the end of the pipeline to the filling station. And last but not least, wherever power is required. Hydrogen inside composite pressure vessel can be a solution for stationary power wherever electricity is needed. I'm coming to the end of my presentation. And perhaps you are already wondering what is a composite pressure vessel? On this slide, I like to give you an, explain it a little bit uh, more in detail. Inside the composite pressure vessel, we have a polymer liner, usually made of polyamide. This liner makes the pressure vessel gas tight. This liner will produce by using a rotomolding process like PASICO is offering this. We also need a metal part, which is um, called boss part to adapt the filling valve. This can be integrated into the polymer liner during the, during the liner production. And this together, the boss and the liner, give us a gas tight system. In order to withstand the required burst pressure of 1,700 bar, various layers of carbon fiber are applied around the polymer liner. Various functional parts such as a filling valve and sensors, make the composite pressure vessel as a complete system. Even we cannot see in the inner of the liner, we cannot see the inner liner anymore, but it is the heart of the complete composite cylinder. And we all know if the heart in our body is not doing well, so the whole body gets sick. Therefore, we are using a smart rotomolding machine to make the polymer liners in different sizes and different application. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Eckert. I think it's uh, now uh, for Matteo uh, Cortesi uh, to present his parts. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, Siegfried, for your uh, full uh, overview. Our customers are focused on uh, type 4 liner. And uh, in the following slide, I will list uh, which are the common uh, market uh, requirements uh, and the performance uh, that uh, let the smart machine be the perfect uh, technology. Customers are looking for hydrogen permeability. The full smart process control allows a wide range of processed materials. Different grade of PA, polyethylene, XLPE, polypropylene, polycarbonate.
products need to have a good response to mechanical and temperature stressful situation. With the smart machine and DTH mold, we can create excellent and uniform wall thickness or thickness management thanks to different heating zone. Type 4 liner requires the boss ceiling. Smart process commutes bosses in aluminium or steel. Users ask for no porosity and defects through the wall thickness and bosses area. Smart technology using vacuum, nitrogen and pressurization can guarantee these performances. And uh, at the end, suitable repetitivity and narrow tolerance are needed. Smart allows less deformation and warpages, thanks to the full process control. Matteo, and then how do you respond, respond sorry, to the, to the market needs? Okay, so uh, to satisfy the different uh, market demands, Persico uh, has developed four different smart machine and solution. Starting from prototype and the small size liners to XL, X large liners till six meter length. Actually, uh, the market needs high production solution. Persico is managing the production of full automated line able to manufacture multiple parts in the same time. In the next video, you can watch the details about what I described. Matteo, any further words on your part? Okay, I'm. Uh, I finished. Thank you very much for your attention.
Thank you very much for uh, this uh, really insightful and very complete presentation. Thanks to to our six speakers today. Uh, it's now time to take maybe some some questions from the audience, and I have also. A, couple of questions that I'd like to ask uh, to the panelists today. Uh, Luca, I have a first question for you. Uh, you said that Persico offers a turnkey solution. How much is research and development important for, for your company, for Persico? Your, yeah. Well, the research and development is very important for us. We are in a um, continuous relation with the, with the raw material supplier, consultants, universities, development centers. So um, thanks to the state of the art uh, of our equipment, uh, our experts and uh, engineers can process different technologies and raw materials through our pool of competence and uh, R&D facility here at Persico. Thank you very much, Luca. Um, another question, this time for Alberto. Uh, is the ABB robotics portfolio ready for European uh, 5.0 industry transition for a sustainable and human-centric approach? Okay, thank you, Benjamin, for the interesting, interesting question. Yes, I have to, I give, will give you just two significant, significant examples. Uh, the first the, the new generation of controller, for example, for the robot controller, it's uh, featuring um, an, an energy system a regeneration using the, the brake energy recover. So it's able to, to save energy, uh, energy cons consumption, and put it in the, in the network. So this, uh, compared to the previous generation, means uh, something like 20% less consumption. So for uh, for big installation, it's a very, very, very positive. It's a part of, of the, the 5.0 that for sure is asking for uh, resource efficient and sustainability in, in each industry. And the other point is regarding the man-centric. This is another point, and in this case, uh, we have uh, for a long time the safe move, safety option that um, allowed uh, to create a, a very close collaboration between robots and, and, and the operators and also a digital monitoring uh, of the, the, the behavior and uh, giving a possibility to make stronger this, uh, this approach. Thank you very much, uh, Alberto. Uh, let's move now to uh, Walter. Uh, I have a, a question regarding your, your, your part. Um, what training programs do you offer for customers, operators, and, and how are they customized to, to suit their specific needs? Oh, well, <clears throat> thank you, Benjamin. Uh, really interesting question indeed. Basically, we have three main kind of trainings. Uh, the first one, of course, is how to run standard regular maintenance. Uh, this is to keep at the best of the production rate, the machines. Uh, the second uh, kind of training is we can help uh, the maintainers in the plant um, with basic instructions on how to fix uh, small issues. Uh, quick fixing uh, directly on site without using uh, Persico help desk. The third one that probably is the most important one is we can train the operators in the plant about the production process. Uh, because uh, since the design phase, we support our customers in optimizing uh, the process. Uh, therefore, we can also provide the training to keep the best from the, the process production process. So uh, standard maintenance, uh, troubleshooting or easy troubleshooting and uh, production uh, process are the th three main kinds of trainings that we can deliver to our customers. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I have a question also for uh, Siegfried uh, Eckert about uh, hydrogen. What, what will be the main challenge for converting from, uh, from gasoline to hydrogen? Uh, 
That's a very good question. Thank you. Uh, the, 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 the feedback from the market uh, give us a signal that uh, the infrastructure to use hydrogen must be finished latest 2026, 2027. And this will be the challenge to get it ready at, 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 at this time to have the filling station for all these trucks on the road. And the second challenge is also to provide the amount of hydrogen which is needed. Uh, I have shown in my presentation uh, some solutions, uh, but uh, that are mostly concepts. And if this will be ready in the right time, I, or to make it ready at the right time, this will be the, the, the biggest challenge. Okay, thank you. And another question maybe for Matteo this time. Uh, how many customers are you working with and what kind of customers are there? Thank you for the question. Uh, during the last three years, uh, we have uh, been working with uh, uh, several customers uh, and uh, uh, they order us uh, molds, uh, prototypes, uh, machine and fully automated system. Uh, our customers are from uh, Europe, USA, China and Korea. Most of them are uh, tier one, but uh, in some cases, uh, we are uh, we and we work directly with the OEM. Thank you, Matteo. Thank uh, you. Let's let's take a couple of questions from the audience. We have a first question about uh, from uh, sorry Emilio uh, Targoy, who is asking what are the main advantages of manufacturing liners. Uh, for pressure vessels uh, using a uh, rotor molding Persico electrical machine uh, compared to the blow molding process. Maybe Luca? I think I think I can reply to Emilio. Uh, thanks for your question for first. Uh, we can say there are at least two, many, two main big advantage uh, while, while using this technology. The first one is the possibility to over mold the bosses during the rotor molding process. So you put you put the bosses in the mold before starting the cycle and the parts you demolded has the two bosses already covered with plastic and uh, strongly um, joined with, with the plastic itself. So there's no need for secondary operation like a bonding or gluing or welding the boss to the plastic. The second big advantage is um, the dimension of the parts. Um, blow molding has some limits when the parts uh, are longer uh, than two meters due to the weight of the parts of the polymer that you are extruding. The weight itself is going to uh, thinning the, the upper part of the liner. So it's very difficult to obtain a, a liner with a very uniform wall thickness. Um, this issue is, is, uh, is solved with the rotor molding technology thanks to the control of the, the temperature and of the process. Uh, that we have with smart technology so we can uh, uh, make liner as you see in the presentation up to six meters and we, we are able to to obtain a very um, constant and consistent layer of plastic all along the, the plastic part about uh, th there's another question uh, from from uh, Emilio. From Emilio, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He's asking about, um, have you been exploring making uh, multi-layer liners to reduce the diffusion of hydrogen? Yes, we have done some experience in the past years. Um, they were not totally successful, uh, frankly speaking. Mm, the main reason is that uh, normally the, uh, the space available to load the second shot uh, so the second layer of plastic is very narrow because it should go through the boss hole. And this, uh, this is normally uh, a hole that is uh, smaller than uh, 30 millimeters roughly. So when it comes to, to loading a big quantity of powder, it's taking uh, quite a long time. Um, again, this, this, uh, this issue has been solved looking at different materials. Uh, nowadays, there are several good materials that has uh, uh, very good um, barrier properties versus the hydrogen molecule. So um, I guess none of our customers and uh, maybe few companies in the world are, are looking at this um, 
the multi-layer technology for this application. Thank you very much, Luca. And let's take maybe a last question before wrapping up. A uh, question from Amir Shustari, uh, who is asking uh, to know more about the vacuuming process. Uh, yes, this is a patent solution that we have um, in our process. Um, we have the ability to, to make the vacuum inside the molding before melting the polymer. And as uh, um, when, when the polymer is melt, we are pressurizing a little bit the mold. So we are able to squeeze all the small gaps that are left during the sintering process of the plastic granules. In this way, the, the layer of plastic we can obtain is very compact and free of porosity and voids. So this is an added value for this process and technology. Thank you again, Luca. We have now come to the end of uh, this webinar, this presentation uh, today about uh, SMART. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us and thanks uh, for your question. Uh, if we didn't get the chance to answer your question, Persico will uh, get back to you uh, by email with a proper answer. Uh, we hope that you enjoy the time with us today and have discovered uh, a great technology. Uh, don't hesitate to get in contact with the speakers. Uh, you have their uh, email address here uh, on the slide. And I would like to thank also Persico uh, and all people involved for this webinar today. Thank you very much again for, for your participation. The webinar was recorded and the link will be sent to you uh, right away uh, now uh, together with a link to download the, the presentation. It will be also available in the coming days on GEC Group Web TV at uh, jccomposites.tv uh, where you can access to all previous webinar, exclusive video content and uh, conference of J Group events. I hope to welcome, welcome you all again soon in a, in a future webinar. And uh, until then, uh, I wish you a, a very good uh, end of day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.